Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Recently, I did some videos on ChatGPT. I mean, who hasn't really? Seems like everybody is using ChatGPT for everything right now. But today, I wanted to do a video from kind of the opposite side of things. So, limitations of ChatGPT and why it's probably not taking away your work just right now. Now, I'm a big fan of ChatGPT, don't get me wrong, so I'm a Plus subscriber and I use it a lot, like uh, GitHub Copilot and other tools, to enhance my productivity and learn new things. More on this by the end of video. But uh, there is limitations, and I think you will better be, better be using these tools if you are aware of the limitations. So let's go. And by the way, if you like the video, remember thumbs up, and if you have any comments or feedback, drop it in the comments section especially if you disagree with some of my points or how you have something to add. Point number one, it's not real intelligence, it's artificial intelligence and not really good at that either. But uh, ChatGPT and AI tools are only, there's an algorithm trained on huge amount of data. The algorithm is focused on predicting what comes next. That's how they work. And um, the problem with that is that it's not really kind of real intelligence. Um, it's only emulation of human mind. It's giving you uh, like creepy emulation of that, especially with the chat interface. You get the feeling you are talking with human, but what you are actually conversing with is combination of a lot of people uh, producing material and then slicing and dicing that up and recombining that. So it's a nice sequence to whatever words you were writing. So uh, in that sense, uh, it's doing pretty good work, but it's an algorithm, so it's not really intelligent. And some of the finer points coming up next are kind of refining this claim, okay? So point number two, it's only as good as source material. So it's been trained with a lot of written material, huge amount of material and a huge amount of code. That's in interesting for me. A software professional. However, the limitation is, for example, year 2021. So anything that happened since that cutover point is not available for ChatGPT. So if you're asking what's the weather right now, not having that information. So people are like treating somehow it as an oracle, but it's only having limited information to base the decisions on. So 2021 was awesome year. <laughs> You can argue that point, but there was a lot of things going on already. But a lot have happened ever since, and ChatGPT wouldn't really know it. And of course, it's reading a lot of material, but there's also a lot of material it's not reading. And finally, it's, it has limited capability to kind of evaluate the value of material and credibility of the source material and how to connect them together and credibility of those. So the source material defines how good it is. And um, I think we are at awesome level already, but it's not perfect. It's far from perfect right now. Next point is uh, morality or bias. So AI doesn't really know what's wrong or right morally. Uh, I think you can argue that even people don't always know that. It's definitely affected by country where you are living culture, politics, uh, religion. So everything affects a little bit on, on the definition of what's right or wrong. That's your society's agreement. It's mostly the same, however, but AI doesn't even have that mostly level right there. So in fact, people have been every now and then dropping off the border of AI to very deep end and getting really, really crazy and sometimes even scary answers. And because of that, uh, the AI builders like OpenAI have been building safeguards to stop that from happening. So they are not allowing you to ask questions that would lead to, the, to those creepy answers. But the AI inherently doesn't really know what's creepy or not. So it's just combining the source material, trying to predict what comes next. If in the source material there is some creepy combinations, they will leak into answers, definitely. It's not doing this based on intelligence decision. So it's a text engine, that's all. So just have to understand that. And the safeguards might be sometimes even messing the answers. I think they are good to be in place because they are directing attention to the things where AI is good 
as opposed to things that where AI is bad and there's a lot of sensationalist sensationalism going on, but still just another limitation for them and safeguards needed to keep them in check. And by the way, there are some studies, but all the current AIs are politically biased as well. Based on the source material and the safeguards, they will give you politically biased information. This is not a conspiracy theory. And uh, conspiracy theory, this is just a kind of factual. There's been some studies already, and there's not much you can do it uh, unless you just avoid anything that has a bias and just feed like hard sciences in, but then it gets very dry. Okay. So, point number four related to this one somehow, AIs also struggle to understand uh, what answer is factually right or wrong. So, if I'm saying that two plus two equals four, you know that that's right, right? So you're understanding that I'm, I'm telling you the truth. If I claim that 2 plus 3 is still 4, then you know that that's wrong. And why is that? Because mathematics is telling you that's how we've been doing the things. That's how we have defined things to be. 2 plus 3 is 5, not 4. But AI doesn't know this really. So AI has been, ChatGPT has been giving you sometimes answers that are mathematically incorrect. And why is that? Because they don't really know. Mathematics is not like anything else than any other question you would be ans asking. So they are, they are realizing that source material is limited. So perhaps this changed in 2022. If you're claiming that 2 plus 3 is 5, AI has no way of knowing, really. It has its source material and whatever you're claim claiming to be. So there's been really amusing cases of this, and uh, be, uh, related to this one, uh, AI might produce you like source links that do not even exist. So some, some person was curing ChatGPT and getting his own obituary, and then when, when he, he was pressing for references and links, he got credible links that do not exist at all. They don't work. Other limits, talking about limits, uh, well, there is token limit. So token limit is currently about 4,000 tokens, and that's a little bit less words. It's a bit more than 3,000 words. That means that a combination of your prompt and AI answer, chat GPT answer, is currently about 3,000 words, a bit more. Okay? So the problem is that if you write an elaborate specification of what you want, then you get really brief answer or it gets cut off and if you try to specify something in in just briefly then you get very very loose interpretation of things as an answer and it's still hard capped to do uh, 4000 uh, tokens a bit more so here is the problem ai cannot really write your program for you entirely in one pass it cannot write your book for you entirely in one pass you can argue that probably programmers cannot either but then it's very hard for the AI to overtake your job, as it is, because it still needs a human there. Uh, it requires somebody to split things up and feed them to it, and then validate the results, parse the results together, and then validate that it still makes sense, and combine the solution out of those parts. And that, that can be easily done with the ChatGPT prompting, which is by the way, a new skill and even profession that people are having. So people have been writing books with ChatGPT and you can definitely solve a bigger scope problem. But uh, what I can say is that there's the token limit and it's very good solving that size problems at maximum. So if you need to, whenever you need to solve bigger problems, you need to treat it as chopping it to sub problems and solving those and combining. So there is coordination and validation needed, orchestration needed, quite a lot of that. And while there in the future could be some automation solution, right now it's still a job for people. And you just uh, use the AI tool more or less heavily. But if you chop things down to smaller pieces, it might be that some of them are quite trivial already. So you might be able to write them just faster yourself. So in that sense, that's kind of a big limitation. And finally, I wanted to point out one thing, and that's innovation. So it's kind of double-edged uh, sword. So I'm using ChatGPT for innovation because when I have a problem and I have a solution in my mind, I am biased by my experience as, as a software architect. 
So I'm biased for technology stacks and architectures and patterns. And I typically come up with a nice solution for any challenge, but it's based on my experience, it's my solution. A colleague of mine might give me a different solution. And I enjoy a lot when I'm working with some colleagues and we are comparing notes and solutions. Now with ChatGPT, I'm able to get a little bit of the same experience because I can say that here is a problem, give me four architectures uh, to cover that. And then I get some ideas and I can compare notes, if there are any sense here, and perhaps this one deserves more research. But uh, other than that, it's a helper tool for my innovation, but is ChatGPT able to innovate something? Well, it's uh, working based on other people's written texts. And it's then randomly, more or less randomly, combining them based on the algorithm and, and the kind of training model. Would that be innovation? It's predicting the next thing in a sentence based on those. Is that innovation? I think that's pretty far definition of my innovation. So I think it's innovation tool, but it's not doing innovation for you. It's not doing empathy for you. There is no empathy. It can probably emulate a little bit of empathy. Empathy based on the source material, but that's it. So empathy, innovation, is uh, an area where people excel and AI still doesn't. It can some, sometimes like can emulate it a little bit, but I think there's still a big difference. If, if I relied on innovation, if I left ChatGPT to write all the code for a decade from now, I'm afraid innovation would die. So that would mean we are just kind of repeating the same patterns, just splitting them differently. I wouldn't call that innovation. So anything that's really out of the box. So let, hmm, let's try and figure out the new theorem and approach this from entirely different viewpoint. That would like go away immediately. So at this point, I want to conclude things. Um, there is a lot of limitations with the current tooling, but Many of those limitations can be kind of, uh, I think you can make them go away or you can definitely make the impact smaller. So many of the points, you can uh, build some operator software on top of that would be splitting and combining. Um, you could use multiple AIs to kind of double check, cross check things, uh, get different doctor's viewpoint and iterate things. Definitely, you could give uh, AI feedback loop and people have been doing that. I think that's awesome. So if you use ChatGPT for code generation, and then you give it the compiler output as feedback loop, then it's able to use that and iterate until um, the kind of feedback loop is signaling it's perfect right now. So then you don't need to get involved and prompt and make any obvious mistakes. You can just let it iterate until it works. So there are ways to improve the AIs, and those are being done right now. And uh, obviously the model uh, will be using more fresh material all the time. And uh, there is also like human feedback loops. So already in ChatGPT, there is thumbs up, thumbs down. And many of the shortcomings that people are listing um, have already been fixed there. So it's giving you already much better answers. So I would expect that many of these limitation shortcomings will uh, be challenged in the upcoming years. I'm very excited for 2023 and 2024. Uh, it is definitely very different than any tools we've used in the previous decade. So it's uh, a very important thing. You shouldn't laugh at it. You shouldn't ignore it. I think you should embrace it and learn to use it. I'm actually saying that there will be probably changes in work profiles. So Anything that's like stupid translation from specification to code uh, could rapidly be automated quite a lot. The problem and challenge is how to come up with those brilliant specifications. That's still a work where you have to, when you are receiving some kind of requests from people, you have to interpret them a lot through different lenses and needs and requirements and your own experience. And uh, while I have been trying use ChatGPT to create some specifications and models, there is so many things it's unable to kind of consider there that I think that will be an interesting area still. So I would be happy if I can uh, act as kind of, I can grab some needs and then I can 
try to formulate specifications and I can dictate them and it will build a prototype for me based on those. So that would be a very interesting level. And on that level, I think it might be grabbing a slice of people's work uh, quite soon, actually. I would say within a few, few years we will be see, seeing tools like that because we already have low-code and no-code tools, so this is just another uh, fourth-generation language in the sense. And I have been for a long time joking that I'm expecting tools where I can dictate things and get a lot of scaffolding done for me already. But I think the moral ethics, intuition, uh, empathy are still domain of us uh, mere people, mortals. And therefore, I think uh, these AI tools will be very useful as force multipliers. So you should already be learning and using them very much. And there will be some new professions uh, growing around them, like some kind of AI operator or supervisor or prompt engineer. Uh, by the way, that's not made of title. People already are popping up with that title. Um, by the way, if you are interested about AI prompting hot tips, let me know in the comments section and by the thumbs up button, because I might be tempted to do a video on that based on my experience and research, how to prompt for software development uh, to get some use out of ChatGPT. Might be an interesting topic, let me know. As for this video, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you and see you in the next one. Bye bye.